thank you that you are our God, that you have reached down to us, that you have sent your son in the flesh to become a man so that we have a path to reach to you. And that through this path, we can truly have life in every sense of the way, in the physical sense that we can be alive and healed here, in the real eternal sense that after death, we still know and believe we will see you and there is an eternal path for us of existence that we don't have to wonder where we go. We don't go into like a big darkness and nothingness. We have hope and we have your help today in every day, in everything that we do. You provide for us, you take care of us, you heal us, you give us the daily necessities of our life. We worship you for that. Come and speak to us in our songs, in our uh, sermon. Receive the songs with the gratefulness of our hearts. Give us your words through the sermon. May your spirit be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Vessi. For our opening song, we invite you all to stand and join in singing a gospel tune entitled, I'm going to live so God can use me. If it makes you want to stand up and dance and clap your hands, go right ahead. I'm going to live so God can use me. Great song, love it, thank you. Um, it's time for our community prayer. Um, we have the tradition of doing a community prayer because we believe togetherness is part of, praying together is part of our tradition in Jesus and God loves the unity of his people. Our community prayer today, um, I will read the part for one and, you will, and we will all together read the part for all. So please join me in our community prayer. Thank you, dear Lord for bringing us to the end of another year. We do not take this for granted. Thank you so much for our goodness, mercies, for your unending and unfailing love. Thank you for the gift of another day. Sometimes things happen that just don't make any sense to us. But we trust that even during our questions, God is still on the throne and all power belongs to God. You love us more than anyone can, more than we could ever begin to imagine. Today, we pray for anyone in the world that is discouraged, abused, oppressed, persecuted, tormented, or denied justice. Praying for everyone who feels sick in the body or in the mind. Praying for everyone who has felt misheard, mistreated, or misunderstood. Please, God, heal every broken heart, heal us inside and out, heal our hurts, and heal our pain. You Thank encourage you us to keep praying, praying for others, others, and we know that you hear us. us. Please put your arms around everyone who is hurting and heal us all. We, we plead with, with you to make a way where there seems to be no, no way. Out. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Our next song is a uh, praise song that the traditional uh, 
community has sung for many years. It is entitled, In His Time. Thank you, the Gucci family. Um, lovely song. Um, our scripture reading today for our sermon comes from the Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And um, I'm reading the New International Version. There is time for everything, in a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And uh, Inho, please come and give us our sermon today, A Time for Everything. Hi, everyone. Merry Christmas. I believe it's time to worship our God. <laughs> so I wish all of you have safe and wonderful Christmas season. And I want to remind all of us, including myself, two things that first one, Christmas and this Christmas season is to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It is not a day to celebrate our own. And the second thing, as we pray together in the community prayer, there are people who cannot celebrate this season. There are still many people. Christmas is very difficult to them. So please be mindful of that. We leave this world with the people who are suffering from their health issue, financial issue, and the loneliness, such things. So I really wish that all of us during this holiday season, what we do, what we celebrate is remembering the love of God. And what we ought to do is more about sharing the love with one another. Let us pray together shortly before we go into the sermon. Lord, thank you so much for this time. And thank you so much for everything you provided us. Lord, for your plan, for your timing, and for your purpose, we confess that we can get the true happiness. Lord, please let us crave, let us seek the eternity that you promised to us. Lord, 
let us not be focused on our own plan and timings, but Lord, let us be mindful of your plan, your love, and your promise. I really wish you use this moment for the sake of your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the title for today's sermon is A Time for Everything. And before I go into the sermon, let me try to check my device works well or not. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's the title for this sermon and Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry for this technical trouble. Oh, yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. It's a poem written by King Solomon. I'm pretty sure you all know him. He's son of King David and also well known as the king of wisdom and this poem is talking about time and all the timings of the activity under the heaven time goes so fast i believe i say this every year i can't believe 2021 is done last year i can't believe 2020 is gone 2019 is gone <laughs> 18 time goes so fast and then I want to ask all of you this question. Um, imagine what plans and expectations you had when it was the beginning of 2021. And at this moment, look back your year. How your plan and expectation, how did it go? Everything went well as you wanted, as you planned, as you expected. There is one famous, famous quote by Charles Swindoll, the Christian pastor. The slide you already saw. Yeah. Life is more about like what happens to you and how you react to it. Life is not like what we plan, what we do, what we expect. Life is more about how we react to the things unexpectedly happen in our life. I very strongly agree to this quote because of looking back my 2021, it was more about how I reacted to everything unexpectedly and accidentally happened in my life. So at this moment, I really want to ask you how you evaluate your reactions in 2021. Are you satisfied or are you discouraged? Are you displeased or are you delighted? Are you satisfied for how you reacted? Every year when I get old and every time when I have more of experience in the issues of the life, this is the thing that I think. And not only me, Christian, both non-Christian, many people say this. The most important thing in life is knowing the right time, timing. Not only, you know, people say, the Bible also points out the importance of the timing in human life. So for today's passage is about all the activities and its timings according to the purpose of God and then let us look at one more verse from New Testament, Matthew's Gospel. Jesus is also teaching us the importance of the timing. In the parable, yeah, it's from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 35. He says, who then is the faithful and wise servant? Who is the faithful and wise servant? whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time. So according to Jesus, the faithful and wise servant is the one who knows the proper time 
to distribute to give the food to all the servants. It is easy to say that knowing the proper time, right timing is important, but actually knowing the right timing, it is super difficult and I, I, I guess it, it is not possible because of we are, I mean, we human are limited by the time and let's, let's go to the next slide. will also teach us the um, importance of knowing the timing. But before we go into the teaching from the Bible, I want to remind all of us that we have strong tendency. We tend to think and understand the timing according to our own, our own frame of reference. Our own frame of reference. Because this is what I wanted to say like a few minutes before. Because of all human life, all human thoughts, all human standards are strongly influenced in time and space. All human life exists in time and space. And then we tend to think the timings according to our plan, according to our purpose, according to our preference. We expect the timing and we demand the timing to happen according to our own. During this holiday season, many people around me, including myself, I often hear from the people around me and from myself that we complain like this. I deserve better Christmas vacation. I deserve to go to better place. I deserve to have better treatment because of it's Christmas season. But what is happening to me? What is happening to now? And what is happening throughout this year? We deserve better. We deserve better. The people in this city, the people in America society, we think and understand according to the time and the place space given to us. I was the same person complaining about, I mean, I had to work on Christmas Eve day two, nine to five. So I was the one who was strongly complaining, oh, <laughs> look at the people around me. They are all enjoying their vacation, but what is happening to me? But like, how do I say, during that week, one missionary person from Guatemala, he visited my office and shared with me his story by showing me a video clip of his ministry that one boy he's ministering, that boy is with severe disability, but him and his family they accepted Jesus Christ through, I mean, the ministry of the missionary is doing. So as some of you know, I'm working for the nonprofit Christian organization and our main focus is helping the people with disability all around the world. And the missionary is from Guatemala and it's a boy in a city, Guatemala. And the boy and his family, they are living in really poor city. And then especially this boy, he just can't do anything, just sleeping in the bed. That's all he can do. He cannot even stand by his own. So the missionary and our organization kind of like gave him specially designed wheelchair. It's this one, the yellow wheelchair. So when he was riding on the normal wheelchair, he couldn't even stand. What he could do is only kind of like, kind of like just sleeping in the wheelchair, but by this specially designed wheelchair, now 
he can stand. He can see things as other people can do. So the boy, the family, and the missionary, they say, they wept together. They gave all the thanks, happiness, joy to the God. It was a very thankful and gracious moment. But at the same time, I asked myself one question. Why I was complaining about like fairness and like kind of like justice because of what am I doing now? Why am I not getting the vacation? And why people in, what's the fairness and what's the justice? Why we are complaining, complaining? But there are people who are living in the same time, same 2021. But there are people, they confess the joy from the bottom of their heart, the gratitude for he can just barely stand, relying on that medical device. I mean, for the people like me in this society, by you know, being allowed to barely stand on, do we give thanks? This thing to keep thank. What is, what should be the true definition of the justice, and what should be the true definition of fairness? That question really remained in my heart and mind all the day. Exactly at the same time, in one place around the world, there are people rejoicing, but at the same time. In the other place, people are complaining and lamenting. And they all have their own different frame of reference. And then they say justice, fairness, gratitude. The faithful and wise servant, what Bible teaches, what's the difference between the wise servant and us? Let us look at let us get the wisdom from the Bible. So it's the confession from Moses and also the confession from Peter. And then both the Moses and Peter, they are focusing on the same thing. God time, God's timing, the difference between human time and God time. So Moses, he says, a thousand years in your sight, in God's sight, are like a day, are like a yesterday. And Peter also says, do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So knowing proper time, it means we have the discerning eye between God time and the human time. So as I explained, we human and all human lives, it exists in time and space, but God is not. God's purpose, God's timing, it is not limited to time and space. So God is not limited by time like we do. What we have to remember is that time is in God. We human lives, we are in time and space, but God, he's not in time. Time is in God. So we need to discern God time and human time. I'm so sorry, I'm not good at using this one. <laughs> yeah, so let us look at what the king of wisdom, Solomon, is teaching us through today's passage. Solomon was the king who had everything, wealth, fame, earthly wisdom and glory, all the treasures, all the conquests, girls, concubines, 
I'm, I'm not covering that, but <laughs> he just had everything that people yeah, can have jealousy. But throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, what he most importantly, what he most importantly confessed is that everything is meaningless. That is his confession throughout the whole book of Ecclesiastes. Everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I'm the one who had everything on the earth, all the treasure, wealth, knowledge, all imaginable treasures I had. I'm the one who had the most in the human history, but reflecting my whole life, this is the confession of King Solomon. Everything is meaningless. So verse 3, 1, I mean chapter 3, verse 1, he said, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. So um, through the book of Ecclesiastes, what Solomon King is emphasizing is that everything is meaningless. More accurately, everything is meaningless when we do everything according to our purpose, our time, human time. And then we have to know that, we have to discern that there is a time, there is a proper time, there is right timings. Same chapter, verse 11, he explains us more detail. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Everything is beautiful in God's timing, not our timing. He has set eternity in our hearts. And no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. So Solomon King, his emphasis through the teaching of Ecclesiastes is about everything is meaningless when we do it according to human time. But everything is beautiful when it is done in God time. Christian pastor and writer John Bloom, in his article, My Time Are In Your Hands, he says, there are three reasons that knowing God's timing is not easy for us. The first reason, our sinful nature. The second reason, our unbelief. And the third reason, it seems like God's timing, it doesn't make sense to us. Many times, this is what we feel. God's timing, it seems like, doesn't make any sense to us. But before we complain the timings of God, we have to know the relationship between timing and purpose. Because of knowing right timing is strongly related to its purpose. So let's, let's say, I drink coffee every morning. And... I'm a big fan of ice americano. So <laughs> I had already one cup of ice americano in the morning. So if someone offered me to drink it in the morning before I start the day, wow, that would be perfect timing. I would love that person. <laughs> but if I prepare to go into sleep, go to the bed, if someone offered me, oh, yeah, you, I know you love americano. Drink Benti Americano and one shot. <laughs> Even if I'm the lover of that coffee, but oh, it's not the right timing. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna save it for tomorrow morning. So, I mean, we think, understand, judge, and evaluate everything in our life according to our plan, our own purpose, and that's the reason why it seems like God's timing doesn't make any sense to us because of everything happened in human life. It is strongly related to the purpose of God and to understand that, to understand the right timing, we have to know God's purpose first. So that's the thing that we have to realize it first. We should not be bound in our own preferences. 
then we should know that God's timing is relative to his purpose. And everything is beautiful in his timing. So it is critically important that we learn to rely on God's timing more than our own. So what would be the purpose of God for the people? Everyone in this world, people who are rich, people who are poor, Does God abandon the people in poor city like the boy in Guatemala? Does God only love the people in a you know, country like America? It's not. Let us look at the verse again. Three eleven and three fourteen. So let us look at the verse eleven again. He has also set eternity in the human heart. He set eternity in the human heart. And then everything God does endures forever. Everything God does endures forever. So he set it in eternity in the human heart, which means he created us. God created us to crave and to seek the eternity from God. That should be the genuine purpose of our life, every human being on the earth. And then everything we do according to our purpose is limited by time and space, but everything that God does, it will endure forever. no matter time, no matter the space. So let us close the message. To trust the speed of God, the thing that we have to do is we humble ourselves under the purpose of God, under the will of God, and under the timings of God. Our life on the earth is not about my plan. It's not about my timing. It's not about my expectation, my purpose. To be a wise and faithful servant, we have to have the discerning eye of God time and human time. And then we have to restore the genuine stewardship in the way how we were created by God. So let us be the one, let us be the servant who know the proper time. Let us be the one who know the proper purpose And let us, let us react to everything that happened to us in our life according to knowing the proper timing and the proper purpose of God. Let us pray. Thank you so much, Father, for this time. And thank you so much for your grace, your love, and and your purpose, and your word. We are weak, and we tend to rely on our own. We only expect and want things happen according to our purpose. But Lord, please let us have a discerning eye so that we can be faithful and wise servant before you, Lord. Please let us have the strength to trust your timing and please let us have the knowledge to know and understand your purpose. Thank you for today. Thank you for the service and thank you for everything you give to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Inho, for that message. At this time, we ask you to stand, if you are able, and join in singing our song in moments like these.
Singing, I love you. Praise God. Thank you, Iho, for the message. Thank you, Lord, for the message that we remind ourselves that your timing is true and it's right, and uh, we can learn to discern it, even though it's not an easy thing for us to do. Um, <clears throat> it's time for our offering. Um, the scriptures for our offering are my favorite scriptures um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this. Whoever sows sparing, sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give the, what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless us abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, we also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Um, the reason we give is first because God's kingdom, God's work, having a church, having a place to meet, having pastors, having bills to pay are necessities, but also because this is what enables the gospel to be preached. This is what enables us to come here and hear God's word and he have a pastor who comes and, and speaks to us and, and tells us what's on God's heart, that God speaks to him and through him we hear the Lord. So... Um, I just encourage you to, you know, usually around Christmas, everybody talks about generosity and gifts and, and stuff. And so I, I want us to encourage you, if you, if this church is, feeds you, if, if this church nourishes you, if you, if you have community in this church, consider, you know, sending a financial gift for our church. Um, we are also in the process of seeking a full-time pastor, and obviously that requires finances as well for his salary. So. Uh, please be prayerfully mindful of that, what you know, what you can contribute um, as well. And, and please remember this, give not of obligation, give out of your heart. Give with joy. If, if you don't have joy, wait, pray about it, and then ask the Lord what to give. Ask the Lord how much to give. Um, give out a ge generous heart. Give out of joyful heart. Whatever you decide to give, just like he instructs us. And and. Please have faith in God that he will supply to you what you need. Even when you give, you know, and you're in need, he is the one who takes care of us. He knows how to take care of his kingdom. He knows how to take care of you. He knows how to give us the right job. He knows how to give us the right, you know, connections with the people that will provide us with opportunities to learn money. He, if you invest, he knows how to tell you where to invest or whatever it is that you do. God knows how to do it 
to, to bring to us the resources we need so that truly, like the scripture says, we have everything, we are enriched in every way, and we can be generous in every occasion. And the result is thanksgiving to God. Just like that missionary, they have the opportunity and they're giving a new wheelchair to somebody that can use it and they're grateful. The thanksgiving goes to God because a gift has provided um, to someone in need. So um, our church, um, if you're here in person, you prefer to give cash or you know by check, we have our little offering uh, plate there. Um, online, um, secure giving but via credit card you can do a, a recurring monthly or you can do it every time as you wish it's a safe giving um and it's very easy by credit card so our cashless society seems to be doing this a lot so um also the website is available at any time for you to give um and uh, it's very easy and safe so let us pray for the offering heavenly father we thank you that you provide for us and we are not concerned i learned i came to la and i didn't have a job and i didn't have a place to stay and you provided for me and i i had to learn how to ask for help and how to give expecting that you will provide for my needs um, i learned how to tithe knowing that as i tithe everything that i have is blessed and, uh, and I know, I am convinced beyond a doubt that you have a way to provide financially for us. You will make our ways prosperous in a way that as we give, we always keep increasing because there are needs all around us. And we want to be people who can, who have the resources to help for those needs. Needs will continue to arise, whether it's a COVID, whether it's something, whether it's natural disaster, things will keep happening in this earth because it's a place where sin and curse w rule and we need to bring in the light of the lord so father speak to our hearts guide us how to give what to give how much to give teach us how to give in joy teach us how to give not out of compulsion or reluctantly but to give generously and increase our ways please bless us is we give and may your kingdom be established in our church and in our city. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, thank you.